People are always asking me tips on how to shoot cars better. And I thought the best way to show that is to show what I don't do. Uh, I believe the best art of any discipline comes out of having restrictions, having limitations. If you have completely open with no restrictions, you might not challenge yourself to be creative. So I think having these things of what not to do will help you learn good habits. Why do I avoid these things? Some of them are faux pas, some of them are just stylistic things I don't really like, um, and some of them are just too obvious and I want to do something a little less obvious. So let's go through this list. Don't ever fill your frame edge to edge with the car you're shooting. Give it some room to breathe. Think of it as a scene and not a picture of a car. Don't ever have poles or distracting objects directly behind the car if it's a distraction. If you can avoid this by repositioning the car, do that, look for that, keep that in mind when you're positioning it. If you can't reposition the car, that's where you want to find an interesting crop or a way to avoid those ugly distractions. And to build on that, don't allow any ugly stuff in your frame that you don't want to be there, unless it's telling part of the story. Find a different perspective or find an interesting crop that will allow you to show the subject and isolate the things you don't want to show. Don't shoot from eye level. No one will look twice at a photo taken from the perspective that they see 24 hours a day or a lot of hours of the day. This is why you can crouch to get a lower perspective or even carry a step stool to always have a higher perspective ready when you need it. Don't shoot in midday sun. This seems pretty obvious, but uh, I still see it. Hopefully, if you have some control over your shoot, you can avoid this. Don't shoot with the sun directly behind you. So you've gone out, it's golden hour, the sun is getting low. There's one angle where the sun will be behind you and your shadow will be on your subject or the wheel wells will be completely lit up by the sun. So avoid that, reposition the car, reposition yourself. Don't do it. Don't overexpose. If you underexpose, you can usually save it. If you overexpose, a lot of times you can't. It's too blown out, there's too weird clipping. It's not great, avoid that. Don't do anything resembling HDR, high dynamic range. Just, it's not good. There, there's no exceptions. <laughs> there's no exceptions, it's bad. Don't shoot interiors in direct sun. It's really harsh and you'll get weird hot spots and it just doesn't work in interiors, so find some shade. On a static shot of a car, don't use a wide angle lens on an exterior. Photography is about making decisions and framing and choosing what it is you're showing. And with a wide angle lens, you're just kind of showing everything. If you're using a DSLR and you're shooting the wide angle lens and you're at like f5.6 or something, you might as well be using an iPhone, uh, which is fine. And I love shooting with a phone, but if you're carrying around a DSLR and doing this, it's you're not getting the most out of your equipment. Don't shoot the same angle over and over and over. Looking is so important. Looking and searching and seeing is the most important part of all of this. If you take nothing else away, seeing is more important than anything else you can do. Don't become obsessed with strobes and lighting. I did this earlier in my career. I felt like the work of a professional was always having this lighting element. That, that's what separated you. And I could not have been more wrong. It stops you from seeing. It stops you from looking at your subject. It stops you from looking at the sunlight and you just end up staring at your equipment and running out of time with your subject. Don't fixate on any gear. It could be a polarizer, a flash, even a tripod. This is an extreme example. I'm not saying tripods are bad, but any piece of equipment like that that you are setting up and breaking down and attaching and removing 
is going to slow you down and it's going to potentially stop you from looking and seeing. When you're looking down, looking at your settings, looking into your camera bag, you are missing things. When you have your shit together, you can mess with this stuff and it will add an extra 10 or 15% to your photos. But until you get that 85% core competency, this stuff is not benefiting you. It's just kind of getting in your way. So those are some of the things that I never do. Even if you follow every one of these rules, I can't guarantee you will get a great photo, but I think it will put you ahead of like 90% of people that are shooting and making mistakes every day. Thank you for watching. Please argue with me, dispute me, prove me wrong, go out there and prove me wrong. <laughs> um, please thumbs up, subscribe, all that stuff, and I'll see you next time.